Hey all my crafty friends, who's ready to start some Christmas crafting? I know I am. I will be trying my best to put out at least four videos per week until Christmas, and I think you will love what I have in mind. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my Christmas videos, and if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, just hit the bell notification. Merry Christmas! In today's video, I will be using this large Christmas ball from Dollar Tree to create a tiered tray decor piece. The first thing I did was remove the silver top from the ball and place it to the side. You will need to use this later. I then used red paint and mixed it with white glue. I stirred it until it was mixed well. The first time I tried this, I forgot the glue and the paint was, was streaky. So, be sure to add the white glue or Mod Podge when you do this. I used a piece of wax paper because we all know how I am with paint. It goes everywhere eventually. I poured the paint inside of the ball and began moving the ball around to cover it. I then placed the ball upside down in a plastic cup to let the excess paint drain. After the ball had drained and dried overnight, it was time to decorate it. I sprayed rubbing alcohol and cleaned the outside using a paper towel. This helps to remove any paint that may have been on the outside of the ball and also any oils that may have been left by my hands so the vinyl will stick better. I set the ball in a plastic cup to help hold it since it is round and wants to roll. I applied the vinyl as straight as I could. I did have a couple of places that wrinkled but I was able to save it by gently lifting that area and reapplying the vinyl. I removed the hanger from the silver top and then hot glued the top back onto the ball. I applied a piece of twine to both sides in case you want to hang this ornament. I had this ribbon that I thought would look great on this red ball. I cut a piece down and glued it to the top of the silver piece. This was easy. I cut another piece of the ribbon and made a simple bow using a twist tie to hold it together. I'm telling you, I can't tie a decent bow to save my life. If you know of any good tutorials, please leave me a comment below. I need to watch more bow tying videos. So I knew I wanted to put the bow on the front, but what was I going to do about the rough edges around the top of the silver piece? Thick twine works every time. I cut and glued a piece of thick twine and made it end at the back of the ribbon. Perfect. This is the finished ball. I think it is so stinking cute. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas videos in the coming weeks, and you know you don't want to miss out on any of them. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, hit the In today's video, I will be making this adorable fabric Christmas tree using an old plaid shirt. I had this metal pot from another project, so I decided to use it as the base. I had some round floral foam from Dollar Tree, and it actually fit perfectly in the bottom. I glued the floral foam to the inside bottom of the planner. I also added glue around the edge of the floral foam at the top. This way I know the tree is secure. I then used a dowel and made a hole in the floral foam. I took the dowel out and filled the hole with hot glue and replaced the dowel. I used my son's old shirt and cut it into strips. I started out measuring and of course I wound up just eyeballing it. The first 12 strips were 12 inches long and about an inch and a half wide. The second 10 strips were 10 inches long and the same width and that's when I quit measuring. I started at the bottom of the dowel with the 12 inch strips first and worked my way up. When I was done with the 12 inch strips, I started working with the 10 inch strips. I tried to turn the strips in different directions as I worked my way up the tree. 
I kept adding strips of fabric until I was about an inch from the top of the dowel. After adding all the fabric pieces, I used my scissors and snipped here and cut there to shape up my tree. I also turned some of the strips to fill everything in. I kept working with it until it looked the way I wanted. I found this star-shaped ornament and thought it was perfect for the top of the tree. I removed a couple of layers of the scrap fabric and glued the star to the dowel. I then replaced the fabric to cover up the glue. Sorry for the terrible angle, but the tree was sort of tall and I just couldn't get a good top-down shot. I think the tree is so cute. I will be using it as a centerpiece this Christmas. It has all my favorite colors, red, gray, black, and white. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading new Christmas videos weekly and you know you don't want to miss any of them. To be notified when I upload a video, hit the bell notification. In today's video, I will be making a tier tray ladder out of a Michaels dollhouse picket fence. This was a pretty simple DIY, and I think it just turned out amazing. I used my utility knife to cut the fence on the side. I simply ran the knife across the wood a couple of times, and then I would just snap it off. I tried to cut it as close as I could to the piece of wood that I was going to be keeping. After I'd cut all the pieces off, I used my utility knife to smooth the wood as much as I could. I then used my Dremel tool to sand the edges in an attempt to make them completely straight. I cut a small piece of greenery that I had actually got off of Facebook Marketplace and made a small wreath to hang on the ladder. I noticed that when I broke off the edges, some of the wood split, so I used my glue gun and glued them back into place. I used some white acrylic paint to paint the sides of the ladder to cover up any of the sanding marks. I placed the wreath on the ladder and attached it with my glue gun. I then added three little red berries from this floral I got from Dollar Tree to the wreath. It still needed something, so I cut a piece of this buffalo ribbon and tied a small bow and added it to the wreath. And of course, as you all know, I can't actually tie a bow. So what I did is I glued the tail down onto the wreath where I wanted it and used a piece of wire to create a bow. But anyways, I think it turned out pretty cute. And just look at how stinking cute it is with my Tier tray. It actually turned out better than I originally expected. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas videos each week, and you know you don't want to miss any of them. To be notified when I upload a video, hit the bell notification. In today's video, I will be making this adorable stamped book using scrap wood. These little stamp books look amazing on tiered trays and bookshelves. They make wonderful handmade gifts for your family, friends, co-workers, and even as a secret Santa gift. The wood I am using is approximately three quarter inches thick, and I cut it down to five and a quarter inches long and three and a half inches wide. I originally painted the wood using white spray paint, but I decided to go over it with white acrylic paint. I painted the front and all four sides of the wood and set it aside to dry. While the wood was drying, I used my Cricut to cut out Merry Christmas. I weeded the vinyl and transferred it to some duck shelf liner. 
After the wood dried, I used hot glue and glued the two pieces of wood together, making sure they were flush in the front. I used a sanding block from Dollar Tree and sanded the wood to give it more of an aged appearance. I wiped the wood off using rubbing alcohol and then applied the vinyl to the wood. I lined the vinyl up on the side so I could add some twine. I used some cream wax and rubbed it over the wood and then used a soft cloth to remove the excess. I used a piece of twine and wrapped it around the book stack and tied a simple bow at the top. I added a dab of glue just to hold the bow so it wouldn't come undone. And then I trimmed the excess twine. I think these little miniature book stacks are just so stinking cute. They can be used year round depending on the phrase you put on them. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas videos every week and you know you do not want to miss them. In today's video, I am using these two little wood boxes I got from Hobby Lobby to create a couple of adorable tear tray frame signs. The first thing I did is I removed the tag, the string, and the hanger from the back of both of these little boxes. On the first one, I'm going to try this white gel stain. I've never used this before, so I wanted to give it a try. I used a makeup sponge from Dollar Tree to apply the gel to the bottom of the box. I then used Waverly Antiquing Wax on the sides and back of the box to bring out the beautiful wood grain in the boxes. I didn't like the way the white gel looked, so I went over it with Waverly Stain. I'm going to sit it aside for a little to see how I like it. On the second box, I taped up the sides of the box with painter's tape and painted the inside bottom of the box using white chalk paint. After the white paint had dried, I removed the tape. I added more tape around the bottom edge of the box and used my utility knife to trim away any excess. I then applied Waverly Antiquing Wax to the box and rub the excess off with a paper towel. I removed the painter's tape again, but I noticed some of the wax had bled through, so I reapplied the tape around the so I reapplied the tape around the inside edge again and just touched up some of the areas. And I used my hot air gun to dry the paint a little quicker. I think the next time I do this, I will apply the stain first and then the white chalk paint to avoid having to do this again. I found these cute SVG files on Design Bundle's website. I used my Cricut to cut them out. I will leave a link in the description below to their website. I have found a lot of really cute designs and they also have a free section. You will definitely want to check that out. I used duck shelf liner as transfer paper and transferred the vinyl to the box. If you haven't heard me say it before, this is the best thing I have ever found for transferring vinyl. I'll leave a link to it in the description also. I used my hot air gun in the same way I used my iron to set the vinyl. After applying the vinyl, I then added a thin layer of Mod Podge to the entire piece to give the sign a finished look. I use gloss, but you can use matte if you want to. And now, back to the first sign we started with. After the Waverly Wax had dried, I liked the look, so I went ahead and started working on it. I used another SVG file from Design Bundles and cut out this adorable red truck design. I have found doing the layering prior to placing it onto the product is a lot easier for me. 
I place the largest image first, the truck, onto the transfer paper. I then centered the wheels and placed them on the transfer paper. And last, I aligned the tree with the back of the truck and placed it on the transfer paper. I applied the design to the box and used my hot air gun to warm up the vinyl and give it more of a hand painted look. The hot air gun works just like my iron does. I applied Mod Podge for a finished look. I used my hot air gun again to speed up the drying time for the Mod Podge. And just look at how adorable this sign turned out. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading new Christmas videos every week and you know you don't want to miss any of them. To be notified when I upload a video, hit the bell notification. In today's video, I will be making this adorable snow family using items I got from Dollar Tree. This little family makes a cute tier tray display, or it can be placed on a table or a shelf. I used a piece of wood I got from Dollar Tree and painted it with white chalk paint. This will be the base for our little snow family. For the snow dad, I used three styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree, one large, one medium, and one small. I hot glued the balls together, centering them as I went. For the snow mom, I used two styrofoam balls, one large and one medium, and I glued her the same way I did him. And for the snow kid, I used two styrofoam balls, one medium and one small, gluing him the same way I did the other two. To speed up the drying process, I used my new Tac Life Mini Hot Air Gun from Amazon. It was only $15 and well worth it. I'll leave a link in the description below in case you're interested. After the wood was dry, I began arranging the little family on the board. I hot glued each of them into their place. This did make dressing them a little hard, so I would recommend dressing them before attaching them to the wood. For the snow boy, I used some red and black rope I got from Dollar General. I believe it was only a dollar. I wrapped it around his neck to resemble a scarf using hot glue to keep it in place. I unraveled the ends and gave them a frayed look. For Snow Dad, I used a solid red rope from Dollar General. It was also a dollar. I used three strings and wrapped it around his neck the same way I did for the Snow Kid, using hot glue to put everything in place. For Snow Mom, I wanted her to be a little fancier. So I used some red and white wire ribbon to create her scarf and I tied it on the side of her neck. This was a little tricky, but I think it was well worth it because she is so cute. I originally started working on this little burlap hat for Snow Kid, but then I decided I wanted it for Snow Dad. I used a piece of wired burlap ribbon I cut the ribbon in half because it was too wide and didn't look right as a hat. I cut the wire off the other side of the ribbon and hot glued it to the hat side of the ribbon. I then took two pieces of burlap that I had cut off and I crisscrossed them and glued them together and then I glued them to the top of the hat. I took my scissors and trimmed around the top of the hat so that everything lined up. For the Snow Kids hat, I used an old shirt and cut it out to resemble a stocking hat. 
I turned the shirt inside out and hot glued the two sides. I then turned the hat the right way and hot glued it to the snow kid's head. I realized the hat needed something, so I took a white pom-pom and glued it to the end of the stocking hat. Perfect. I wanted to tie Snow Dad and Snow Kid together, so I used a small piece of the fabric I used for Snow Kid's hat and put it around the middle of Snow Dad's hat. Now for Snow Mom's hat. I wanted her to have something frilly. I had an old roll of ribbon that had a little flower on it. Only problem was, it was white. So I mixed some red paint and water to create a dye since I didn't have anything else to dye the flower with. After mixing it together well, I simply used it to paint the flower. I used my hot air gun to dry the flower quicker. And once it was dry, I glued it to the snow mom's head. I used a black sharpie for their eyes and nose and a pink sharpie for their mouths. I think they all turned out pretty stinking cute if you ask me. What do you think? If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading a ton more Christmas videos in the weeks to come and I know you don't want to miss any of them. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, hit the bell notification. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I created these cute Christmas shadow boxes using Dollar Tree signs. The signs were already white, so I didn't have to paint them. I did glue scrap paper from Hobby Lobby to the inside of both and added some natural nautical rope from Dollar Tree. The first thing was to stain the tree trunks with Waverly Wax. I applied the stain and rubbed it off. The pieces of wood I'm using are leftovers from previous projects, so there was very little cutting that I had to do for this. I used leftover tree pieces for the trees. The scrapbook paper I'm using I got from Tuesday morning. It was on sale. I think I got it for about $5 for a 25 piece pack. I cut the scrapbook paper down so it would fit on the tree. I then used Mod Podge to glue the paper to the wood. I got this little brush out of the makeup section at Dollar Tree. The brushes work great for applying Mod Podge and also for painting. The bristles don't fall out like regular cheap paint brushes. I would definitely recommend grabbing a few of these. I folded the edges over the wood and glued them down also. I went ahead and glued the small tree and the trunk to the box. I cut down the scrapbook paper for the larger tree and used Mod Podge the same way I did for the smaller tree. I wanted the second tree to stick out a little, so I used a tumbling tower block and hot glued it to the back of the tree. I also went ahead and glued the trunk to the tree. I made sure it was going to fit and then hot glued the second tree to the box. I think it turned out pretty stinking cute. For the second box, I hot glued two pieces of wood together to make one tree. Like I said, I'm using scrap pieces of wood from other projects. I wanted this tree to be made with twine, so I added a bead of glue at the bottom of the tree and then placed the twine in the bead of glue. I did this for the first few rows of the tree and then I just started wrapping the twine until I got closer to the top adding glue just when I needed it. Once I got to the top, I still didn't really like how it looked, so I just started wrapping the twine in different patterns 
up and down the tree. I attached a block and the trunk to the back of the tree. This was a really fun and easy Christmas project. I hope you enjoyed it and get a little inspiration for your own. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will have a ton more Christmas videos in the weeks to come and I know you don't want to miss any of them. If you want to be notified when I upload a video, hit the bell notification. Hi there all my crafty friends. In today's video I will be trying, and let me emphasize trying, to make the cute little chocolate covered marshmallows that are so popular right now. For the most part they came out cute, but if you look closely the chocolate didn't dry correctly. So I'll be showing you what not to do if you decide to try your hand at these. I will be creating another video showing the correct things to do. I just wanted everyone to see all crafters make mistakes and we all have to learn from them. I first spray painted them all white and then added a layer of white chalk paint and let that dry. While the paint was drying, I cut the faces out using my Cricut. I think these little faces are just the cutest. I used transfer paper to transfer the faces onto the marshmallows, making sure they lined up the way I wanted them to. I mix some nutmeg brown paint and glue together. The glue helps to make the paint thicker and makes it look more like chocolate. You can also use Mod Podge for this. I stirred the mixture until it was consistent. I used old paint that was really thick, so I had to keep adding paint to water it down some. And I think that was mistake number one. After mixing the paint and glue, I outlined where I wanted the brown paint to flow and sat it aside to dry. I did this on all four marshmallows. This was a suggestion I saw on another video I had watched, but to be honest, it didn't work. So mistake number two had been made. Once the paint and glue mixture had some time to set up and dry, I started pouring the mixture over the top of the marshmallows. I would rotate the marshmallow to allow the chocolate to flow down. Everything was looking great up to this point, even though the brown paint sort of went where it wanted to. Something about me that you may not know, I am not a very patient person. So this is where the big problem started. I thought I would just use my hot air gun to help the paint dry. It just seemed like it was taking forever. Big mistake. If you watch, you can see that the paint on the outside was drying. But because the paint was so thick, the paint under the top layer was not drying. The paint began clumping up and looked like it had holes in it. Then I decided to cover up the crappy looking paint by just adding more paint. And hey, why not try using the hot air gun again? Another mistake has been made. The six things I learned from this failed project. One, use good glue, not clumpy glue. Two, add faces after you have poured the paint and let it dry. Three, do not paint how you want it to flow because it's going to flow where it wants. Four, learn patience. This is a big one for me. Five, do not use hot air gun. Let the paint dry on its own. And finally, six, don't add more paint on top of crappy looking paint. It just makes it look even worse. I hope this video will help you know what not to do if you decide to try your hand at making these little marshmallow decorations. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading a ton of videos between now and Christmas and you know you don't want to miss any of them. To be notified when I upload a new video, hit the bell notification.
Today, I'm making some cute beaded ornaments that can be hung on a tree or sat on a table or bookcase to add a little boho to your decor. The beads I'm using are from Amazon, and I'll leave a link in the description for them. I am also using various string and twine from Dollar Tree. I saw these ornaments on Pinterest and thought they were so cute, I wanted to give them a try. The first has a total of five beads in three different sizes, and I used Waverly Wax to stain the beads. I strung the beads onto the string starting with the smaller bead and working my way up to the larger. I then did the pattern in the reverse order. To create the tassel, I used my fingers and wrapped more of the string around them until it was the thickness I liked. After I removed the string from my fingers, I used one end of the beaded string and tied it to the middle of my tassel. I pushed the beads down onto the tassel and made a small loop at the top. I twisted some of the rope around itself and added a dab of hot glue to hold everything together. I cut the tassel in the middle and untwisted and frayed the string of the tassel using my fingers and a stiff brush. This is what the first ornament looks like finished. With the second ornament, I left the beads natural and strung them onto the same string I used for the first. I added two small beads, one medium bead, one large bead, and then I reversed the order on the other side of the larger bead. I created the tassel this time using my fingers and tied it off the same way as I did before. For this ornament, I used a thin piece of wood from Dollar Tree and a pattern I found online to create a pair of angel wings. I traced the pattern onto the wood and used my miter saw to cut it as close as I could. I then used my Dremel tool with some medium grit sandpaper to get the wings shaped up. I used a sanding block to smooth the edges. I used Waverly Wax to stain the wings and bring out the wood grain. To create the angel's body, I used a piece of wood and wrapped some string around it until it was the thickness I wanted. After tying the tassel in the middle and pulling it off of the wood, I separated the tassel in the middle for the wings. I applied hot glue and attached the wings to the inside of the tassel. I cut a short piece of string and tied it around the waist area of the angel. I took a bead that I had stained and placed it on the string at the top of the angel for the head. I then cut the tassel and trimmed everything up. Once I was finished, this is the angel ornament. I think it's adorable. This is my favorite ornament out of all five of these that I made. This was the simplest of all the ornaments. I simply wrapped the string around a piece of wood to the thickness that I wanted, tied it at the top. I added a large stained bead to the top and added a dab of hot glue in the middle of the bead. I created the hanger by simply tying a knot in the string at the top. This ornament is simple to make, yet beautiful and elegant to display. For the final ornament, I used a small, clear, round ornament from Dollar Tree and some natural nautical rope. I removed the silver hanger from the top of the ornament and started adding the rope by applying hot glue and pressing the rope into the glue. I continued doing this until the entire ornament was covered. At the bottom, I cut the rope added hot glue and pressed the end piece of the rope into the hot glue.
For the hanger, I cut some of the rope off and made a loop. I had untwisted a piece of the rope to make it smaller, and I hot glued this part onto the hanger part. After I finished, after I finished, I hot glued the entire hanger portion onto the top of the ball where the hole was. And this is what they all look like together. I haven't put up my big tree yet, but these ornaments are going to look amazing on it. I'm so happy with the way they turned out. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas videos in the weeks to come. Earlier this week, I had an epic day of creating Ray Dunn inspired wooden Christmas tags. These little tags look amazing on a tea air tray or hanging from a Christmas tree or wreath. I created a template using a tag I had gotten from Tuesday morning. I traced the tag onto wood I had gotten from Hobby Lobby. The tags measure approximately four and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. In preparation, I went ahead and cut all the tags using my miter saw and then sanded them all with my orbital sander. I had originally painted some of the tags with spray paint, but I decided to go over them with chalk paint and let them dry. I used my Cricut to cut out several Christmas sayings using a Ray Dunn inspired font. I will leave a link in the description below if you are interested in getting the pre-cut vinyl. The first tag was painted white and I transferred the word believe using transfer paper. I thought it needed something more, so I added two beads I had already painted onto a piece of twine and then added it to the tag. Look at how cute the sign is, and I just love the pop of color the red beads give it. After the first tag was finished, I decided to do all the tags at one time for each step. What I mean is I added the vinyl to all of the tags before moving on to the next step. The second tag was painted red and I added the word joy in white vinyl. The next tag was painted black and I added faith in white vinyl to it. The next tag was painted black and I added jolly in white vinyl. The next tag had been painted red and I added jingle in white vinyl to it. The next tag was painted red and I added ho 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 in white vinyl. The next tag had been painted red and I added Happy Holidays in white vinyl. The next tag had been painted black and I added Bah Humbug in white vinyl. And this tag was painted black and I added Silent Night in white vinyl. After I had applied the vinyl to all the tags, I used my iron and a thin piece of fabric to help seal the vinyl. This also gives my wood projects more of a hand painted look. By doing this, the vinyl will kind of melt into all the crevices and cracks of the wood. The next step was to seal and protect the tags with Mod Podge. I painted each tag with Mod Podge and put it to the side to let it dry. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I added embellishments to some of the tags. I used twine and ribbon on each of the tags so it could be hung on a tree or taken off so it can be sat on a table, tiered tray, or a shelf. I had so much fun doing all these little signs. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas videos every week, and you know you do not want to miss any of them. To be notified when I do upload a video, hit the bell notification. In today's video, I will be making these adorable miniature wire Christmas trees that can be used on a tiered tray. I couldn't make up my mind if I wanted to use the silver or the green trees. I finally decided on the silver ones. I removed the bell at the bottom using a pair of jewelry pliers and I also removed the star from the top. I suggest leaving the star on because I wind up at the end pot gluing the star back on. 
I use my drill and a large bit to drill holes in a couple of the little wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I didn't drill all the way through the wood, just enough to add the tree and some hot glue. It took some work, but I finally was able to get the little round end off of the bottom of the tree. It was tough and I just had to keep moving the pliers back and forth until it finally broke. I added hot glue to the hole I had drilled into the wood and placed the end of the metal tree. I held it until the glue had set up enough to hold it itself. I wanted to make sure it would stand up straight. Now for the second tree. I used the screw gun again and drilled a hole the same way I did the first time. I made sure the bottom of the tree fit into the hole before using hot glue. Glad I did because I had to drill the hole a little bit more. I added the hot glue and held the tree like I did before. I then hot glued the stars back onto the tree, so I would recommend not taking them off to start with. I pulled on the wire limbs of the tree until the trees began to look something like what I was wanting. This is a super easy DIY and these little trees look amazing on a tier tray. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas DIYs in the weeks to come and you know you don't want to miss them. To be notified when I upload a new video, just hit the bell notification. In today's video, I will be making three wood Christmas trees using these cute little ornaments that I got from Michaels. These little ornaments were only 99 cents and I could not not get them. They were just so stinking cute. I removed the twine hangers and the sticker from all the Christmas trees. I lightly sanded the trees with a sanding block. For the first tree, I used a hot glue gun and glued the tree to a Dollar Tree tumbling tower block. After the tree had set up, I stained it using Waverly Wax. I just love the little indentions in the tree. I stained all sides, including the tumbling block. I then wiped off the wax using a paper towel. I wanted to give the tree more of a rustic farmhouse look, so I used a couple of layers of white chalk paint and painted just the tree on the front and the back. I didn't paint the star on top or the trunk at the bottom. After the paint had dried, I used my sanding block to give the paint a worn look. I just sanded it until I liked the way it looked. I then lightly sprayed the tree with rubbing alcohol and wiped it clean with a paper towel. I use rubbing alcohol because it dries faster than water. After letting the alcohol evaporate a little, I added Mod Podge to the entire tree to give it more of a finished look. I love the way this tree turned out. I just can't decide if I like the front or the back better. Let me know in the comments which side you like. For this little Christmas tree, I used scrapbook paper with a Christmas design. I stained the front of the tree with Waverly Wax. And on the back, the smooth side, I only stained the star and the trunk. I applied Mod Podge to the tree and pressed down on the paper to make sure all the bubbles were smoothed out. I took my scissors and trimmed the paper from the side of the tree. I wanted the scrapbook paper only on the smooth side of the tree. After everything was trimmed, I went back with Mod Podge and glued down any of the areas that were sticking up or not glued down well. I thought the scrapbook paper was a little too new looking, so I applied a light layer of Waverly Stain to give it more of an aged look. 
I then hot glued a tumbling tires block to the bottom as the base and stained it. I finished the tree off with a layer of Mod Podge for a finished look. For this tree, I used a wood slice as the base and hot glued the tree to it. I should have waited until I was finished with the tree on this one. The base made it a little harder to apply the paper. I traced around the tree and cut out the paper to the size of the tree. I applied Mod Podge to the back of the tree and added the paper. I pressed it down to make sure there wasn't any bubbles. I thought the paper was a little too new looking, so I used Waverly Stain and stained the entire tree, including the paper. I also stained the base. I think next time I will leave the base natural. It just turned out too dark. These little Christmas trees turned out so stinking cute. I just wish Michaels would have had more than three of them. This is a simple DIY with a big impact. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas decor and gift ideas in the upcoming weeks, and you know you don't want to miss those. To be notified when I upload a video, just hit the bell notification. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I make these cute mini stacked books using scrap wood. These books work great on tier trays, bookcases, tables, or just about anywhere you want to show them off. The wood I'm using today is approximately three quarter inches thick, five and a quarter inches long, and three and a quarter inches wide. I'm using some leftover wood from a project I did a while back. I used sheetrock mud to fill in some cracks. After it dried, I sanded it smooth. I didn't have any red chalk paint, so I mixed some up so I could create the color I wanted. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. And I started painting the two pieces of wood. I then applied hot glue and centered the books on top of each other. I am only using two blocks for this stacked book project, but you can use as many as you want. After I applied the glue, I held the books down for just a moment to make sure that the glue was sealing well. I then used a block sander from Dollar Tree and sanded the chalk paint so it would have a smooth feel. And also, it gave it more of a rustic look, which is what I was going after. After I was finished sanding, I sprayed some rubbing alcohol onto the block and rubbed it with a paper towel. This helps to get any sand dust off of the wood. I have found rubbing alcohol to be the best at this because it dries quickly. I used my Cricut to cut out Merry Christmas at a size that would fit on the side. I used my duck shelf liner to transfer the words to the book. I have to say, this shelf liner is amazing. It works so much better than transfer paper. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. See how easily it picks up the letters to be transferred? I don't even have to apply that much pressure. I usually just rub my finger across the letters and they stick. I made sure the words lined up the way I wanted them to, and also that they were straight. I picked up this Americana Cream Wax at Tuesday morning yesterday to give it a try. I don't know if you have a Tuesday morning near you, but if you do, make sure you check out the clearance section. That's where I got this wax, and I paid less than a dollar for it. I took a soft cloth and rubbed the wax over the entire book stack. I let the wax dry for about 15 minutes. I had this wired burlap ribbon I wanted to add to the book stack. I cut the ribbon down to size and hot glued it to the back of the books. Next I made a simple bow and tied it in the middle with some lace I had left over. I cut little notches at the end of the bow. 
I say notches because I don't know what they're called. If you know what the name of this is, please let me know in the comments. I messed around with the bow until I was happy with the way it looked and then glued it to the ribbon that was already on the book stack. These little books can be used for all different occasions. This is just my Christmas version of them. If you are interested in purchasing the set or the pre-cut vinyl so you can make your own, I'll leave a link in the description below. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. In today's video, I will be showing you how I made this adorable gnome wood tag for tier trays or Christmas ornaments. I used wood from Hobby Lobby because it's lightweight. I cut the tags down to four and a half inches long and two and a half inches high. This is a great handmade Christmas gift for family and friends, and it's not that hard to do. All you need is wood, paint, vinyl, and some twine. The first tag is a custom order with a white background. I really loved putting this one together. I painted the wood with white spray paint and used my Cricut to cut out the image. I'll leave a link in the description below for the pre-cut vinyl that I used if you're interested. I centered the vinyl and applied it to the tag. I used duck shelf liner for my transfer paper and I'm telling you if you haven't tried it you are missing out. This is the best thing I have ever used to transfer vinyl. It picks up even the smallest script without a problem. And it can be used multiple times before it starts wearing out. After I got the vinyl applied, I put a layer of Mod Podge for a finished look. I then added some twine so the tag could be hung. I think this one turned out amazing. I guess I'll have to make one for myself also. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more Christmas videos every week and I know you do not want to miss out on them. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, just hit the bell notification. Now it's time to create this adorable gnome using a mini beer bottle. I painted the bottle with white paint and let it dry. The bottle I'm using is actually a Corona Mini, but any mini bottle will work for this project. I took a pair of slippers that I got from Dollar Tree and turned them inside out. I wanted to use the furry side for the gnome. Then I stuck the beer bottle into the slipper and I used my Monvic glue gun to secure the slipper to the bottle. I cut the slipper from the bottom of the bottle so it would be able to sit flat without leaning. And I added glue to the bottom to secure the little bit of fluff that was around the edge. I took a large wood bead and placed it at the middle rim of the bottle. This is going to be my gnome's, this will be his nose. After many failed attempts of creating the hat, I finally figured it out. I used a buffalo check dog bandana I also got from Dollar Tree. I wrapped it around the top portion of the bottle and then cut it down to the size I needed. I turned the bandana inside out and glued it down the seams. After letting the hot glue cool for a minute, I turned the bandana right side out and started messing with it. I put it back on the bottle just to make sure it was going to fit the way I wanted it to, and it did. I decided to put a white pom-pom at the end of the hat to give my gnome a Santa vibe. Before attaching the hat, I had to remove the nose that I had glued down earlier without thinking. That's why you see a hole in the white fur. I began cutting down some gray yarn for his beard. 
I probably cut about 25 to 30 pieces of yarn. I glued the yarn down around the nose and face area. This took quite a while to finish since I was gluing each piece of yarn individually. Now it's time to add the nose and the hat. I put the hat on first and let the ends of the yarn stick out from under the hat. I then glued the nose at the top middle of the face. As you can see, this gave my little gnome a mustache and beard look. I thought that was cute. I haven't really seen any gnomes with a mustache before. He needed a bit of a trim, so I trimmed the beard around the bottom. I found a couple of places that needed extra yarn, so I went ahead and added that also. I continued to trim his beard until I was happy with the way he looked. And this is how he turned out. I continued messing with his hat until it was just right. This is the completed beer bottle gnome along with a couple of his friends. They are also stinking cute. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will have a lot more Christmas videos coming out and I know you don't want to miss any of them. Today I will be making this tiered tray using Dollar Tree stove covers, a plunger stick, and large wood beads from Amazon. I think the tray turned out amazing. I used part of a plunger I had already cut down to size and stained for an earlier project. I took the larger stove cover and turned it upside down. I had to find the center of the circle and this was the hardest part. I began measuring over and finally found it. I placed the plunger in the center and marked around it. I applied E6000 and hot glue to the plunger stick and held it in place for a while until the hot glue stuck. I did the same thing with a smaller cover, except I marked it on the top. I then applied more E6000 and hot glue and attached it to the bottom part. While the hot glue set up a little longer, I stained six large beads using Waverly Wax. And I have got to start wearing gloves when I do this. Look at my hands. After wiping down all the beads and letting them sit for a little bit, I turned the tray over and started applying the feet or the wood beads to the tray with hot glue. I didn't measure, I just eyeballed where I thought the beads should go. I love the way the tray turned out. The top is a little flimsy, so I won't be putting anything breakable on it, but it's still a beautiful tray for the holidays. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more Christmas videos in the weeks to come. If, if you want to be notified, in today's video, I will be making this cute candy cane garland. Perfect handmade gift for family or friends, or better yet, for yourself. I cut down a piece of wood I got from Dollar Tree and drilled a hole in the top center. Then I used my Waverly stain and stained the entire piece. After the stain had set up, I took the piece outside and spray painted it white.
The garland actually turned out better than I expected. This is a simple handmade gift, perfect for family and friends this Christmas season. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more Christmas videos every week, and I know you don't want to miss out on them. Today I'm going to make a cute Santa sleigh tier tray decoration and add a cute little Santa knob to the sleigh. I think this is my favorite Christmas project so far this year. I am truly in love with the way this turned out. You will need a sleigh ornament. I got this one at, you guessed it, Dollar Tree. After I took the tag and the decorations off of it, I used a pair of wire cutters to take the small part off the back of the sleigh where you would hang it from a tree. This was a little tough, but I just kept wiggling it back and forth until it came off. I then taped up the top portion and sides of the sleigh with painter's tape. I only left the bottom and the rails untaped. And it took some creativity to figure out how to get this thing taped up. After I had the sleigh taped up, I took it outside and spray painted it black. I let it dry for a few hours before I brought it back in. After it was dry, I removed the painter's tape. I applied Mod Podge to help the chalk paint adhere to the metal. After the Mod Podge was dry, I painted the inside and the outside of the sleigh with some red chalk paint. It took a couple of coats to get the color I was looking for without any streaks. And now it's time to start the Santa gnome. I took a thread spool and attached a wood bead to the top using hot glue. I used some Dollar Tree white nautical rope for the beard. This was a new pack, so I used the end that was taped. I eyeballed the length I needed and cut the rope. I untwisted the rope. This took some time, but it was well worth it. Then I used a stiff brush and brushed it out and added the beard to the bead using a dab of hot glue. I used a tree skirt I got at Dollar Tree for the Santa's hat. I cut it down to size and then added hot glue and attached it to the middle of the bead. I then started twisting and hot gluing the hat down the way I wanted. And the final touch, I added a pom-pom to the end. Now it's time to add Santa to his sleigh. I needed him to sit a little higher, so I added a short stem to raise him up. I then glued him to the inside middle of the sleigh. This is the final look. I think it is so stinking cute. This was a simple project and it looks amazing on my simple tiered tray. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will have more Christmas videos every week until Christmas, and you know you don't want to miss them. So Today I'm going to show you how to make these adorable rustic wood tiered tray signs or Christmas decorations, and this adorable Santa sleigh with a little Santa gnome inside. For the signs, I started with wood I got from Hobby Lobby, and I cut it down to two and a half by two and a half inch squares. I mixed black paint and water to give the wood a stained look without having to use stain. I painted the blocks with the paint and water mixture and then wiped them all off with a paper towel. While the wood was drying, I used my Cricut and cut out four little Christmas designs that I liked. I will leave a link in the description below for the pre-cut vinyl in case you don't have a cutting machine and you want to do this project. I will also include some other designs I have made. After the wood was dried, I applied the vinyl to each of the blocks, making sure I had centered each design. I then used my iron and a thin piece of fabric to melt the vinyl into all the cracks and crevices of the wood. This gives the blocks more of a hand-painted look without the mess of paint. This is my secret every time I'm working with vinyl and putting it on wood.
and this is what each block looked like after I applied the vinyl. Next, I added a piece of twine to the back of each block so it could be hung or just sat on a flat surface. On the believe sign, I added a small burlap bow to set it apart from the others. I love the way they all turned out. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Today, I will be making this cute Christmas mini garland that is perfect for a tiara tray and this adorable Christmas mini wood sign. Not only are these perfect for tiara trays, but they also make great gift giving ideas for this Christmas. I painted beads in black, red, and white using a stand that I created so I wouldn't get paint all over my hands. If you want to see how I painted the beads without getting paint everywhere, I will leave a link to that video in the description below. I started stringing the beads on a thin piece of twine I got from Dollar Tree. I know a lot of people suggest putting tape at the end to help the twine from unraveling, but I've tried that and it just doesn't work for me. What I do is just trim the end or twist the twine when it starts getting frazzled. I will also use a pair of scissors or a pair of tweezers to clean out the hole in the bead if it seems to have leftover wood pieces in it. Now we need to create a tassel for the end of our garland. I only created one tassel for the end, but now I wish I would have made two. But of course, I cut the end too short to add a tassel unless I want to restring everything. So I guess I'll be making another one with tassels at both ends. I used some lace ribbon from Dollar Tree, some wired buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and some of the twine I used to create the garland. I cut everything to about the same length, and I also cut the wired part off of the buffalo ribbon. I didn't want my tassel to be stiff. I then cut the buffalo ribbon down to about the same width as the lace ribbon. So this gave me three strips of the buffalo ribbon, which of course meant I needed three strips of lace ribbon and twine. I layered all the ribbon together by stacking one on top of another. I used some more twine and wrapped it around the top of the tassel. I tied a double knot to start and I left the end of the knot at the top of the tassel. This will help when attaching the tassel to the garland. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I am attaching the tassel to the garland by tying it with the tail of the string that I left out. I will do another video showing this closer up and at a different angle so you can see it. I then added a dab of hot glue to the top of the tassel and the first bead on the garland just to make sure everything was secure. I tied a simple double knot at the other end so the beads wouldn't fall off. I wanted more of a tattered look so I began stripping off some of the pieces of the buffalo ribbon. This gave it more of a fringed appearance. I did leave one of the buffalo ribbons alone. When I was finished, this is what it looked like. I think it's just adorable. I saw this little sign on Pinterest and thought it was so cute. I wanted to make one for myself. I am using a piece of scrap wood I cut down to a 4x4 four four square and sanded smooth. I painted the wood using apple barrel vanilla ice cream acrylic paint instead of white. I just wanted something a little different. I painted the front, back, and all four sides. While the paint was drying, I used my Cricut to cut out the words for the sign. I will leave a link in the description below for both the completed sign and the pre-cut vinyl so you can create your own sign if you don't have a Cricut. I applied the vinyl to the wood block making sure everything was centered and lined up correctly. 
This is the trickiest part to the whole project. I then use my secret to applying vinyl. I use my iron and a thin piece of fabric to give the piece more of a hand painted look. By doing this, the vinyl will melt into the cracks and crevices of the wood. I then applied a thin layer of Mod Podge to give it a finished look. And this is the finished look. It is so stinking cute and it fits perfectly on my Tierra tray. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will have a lot more Christmas videos in the upcoming weeks leading to Christmas and you know you don't want to miss them. In today's video, I will be making these cute little joy bottles that can be added to your Christmas decor or given as a gift. I will leave a link in the description below where you can purchase the complete set or just the pre-cut vinyl for this project. The items you will need for this project are three bottles painted white, two wide ribbon in the color and pattern of your choice, three some twine and four a hot glue gun i used one of the bottles to measure the ribbon and then cut four pieces of ribbon to that length i was using a wired ribbon and i just didn't like the way the wire was laying on the bottle so i simply pulled the wire out of the top and bottom of the ribbon this made the ribbon easier to work with and fold the way I wanted around the bottle. I did this with all four ribbons that I had cut. I then placed the ribbon where I wanted it on the bottle. I folded down the edges of the ribbon and then used my trusty hot glue gun to glue it to the back. I did the same step with all three bottles. And this is how they looked after I added the ribbon. So now I had to cover up the top of the bottles. I used some twine from Dollar Tree and started just below the bottom lip of the bottle. I added a little hot glue and started wrapping the twine around until I would reached the top. When I got to the top, I added a little more hot glue and cut the twine off, pushing the tail of the twine into the hot glue. I continued doing this until all three bottles were completed. And this is what they look like. I used my Cricut and cut out the letters for Joy using a Ray Dunn inspired font from DeFont. I just love this font and try it on everything. I didn't use transfer paper. I simply pulled the letters off and place them in the center of the ribbon on the front of the bottle. I wanted to make sure I was keeping the seam in the back. It was a little tricky applying the letters, but I think it would have been harder if I would have used transfer paper. After looking at the bottles, I decided to add some twine around the bottom portion of the bottles also. I started applying the twine right at the edge of the ribbon, making sure I started it on the back side of the bottle. I applied hot glue and wrapped the twine around until I got to the bottom of the bottle. To finish it off, I used some Christmas tree greenery from one of Dollar Tree's Christmas ornaments. I'm going to be using the ornament itself in another video, but I didn't need the greenery for what I have in mind. I picked where I wanted the items to go on the bottles and simply hot glued everything into place. And this is what the bottles look like after I completed them. They are ready to be added to some Christmas decor. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. 
I will be uploading more Christmas videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. If you want to be notified when I do upload a new video, just hit the bell notification. Look at this adorable Christmas sign made using Dollar Tree items, Hobby Lobby ribbon, and my Cricut. It would look perfect on any wall this Christmas season. I will be selling this in my store. If you are interested in purchasing the completed sign or just the pre-cut vinyl, I'll leave a link in the description below. This was a simple craft. I used a silver charger from Dollar Tree and I painted it with Rust-Oleum white flat enamel paint. Then I used my Cricut to create the cutout. I weeded and then transferred it all to the charger, making sure I had it centered. I painted matte Mod Podge over the entire charger. I used this clear shelf liner by Duck as my transfer paper. I've been having a lot of problems with transfer paper not wanting to stick, so I picked some of this up and I will tell you, it is the best thing since sliced bread. I'll add a link to the description for this product just in case you want to try it out. Then I took some Dollar Tree natural nautical rope and hot glued it around the edge of the charger, starting at the top center. I would simply add some glue, then hold the rope down in place. I found a few places that didn't stick too well, so I went back and added more glue and held it down. And I did burn my fingers a couple of times. I used my scissors to cut the extra rope off the top, and I think it's time for a new pair of scissors. I created a loop and hot glued some of it to itself. I held it in place for a moment. Then I cut off the excess rope. I found the top center and glued the loop onto the charger. I used some Buffalo Check Wire Ribbon I had gotten from Hobby Lobby. And believe it or not, but I actually found this exact same ribbon at Dollar General today for $2. I took the ribbon and made two loops about the size of my hand, then tied them together using a piece of twine. I hot glued the bow to the charger and fluffed it up until I liked the way it looked. I then realized some of the rope still wasn't glued down, so I did a quick touch up. And voila, I was done. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be putting out new Christmas videos from now until Christmas Day. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, simply hit the bell notification. In today's video, I will be showing you how I made this custom order Christmas sign. After I was finished sanding, I sprayed rubbing alcohol onto the sign and wiped it down with a rag. This helps to remove all the sand dust from the wood. 
I then measured and found the center of the sign and made a mark with a pencil. You want to know where the middle is so everything is centered and not lopsided. I started placing the vinyl on the sign keeping in mind where the middle was. Some of the pieces were large enough that I didn't use transfer tape, but other pieces I had to. And now for my little secret. When I do any vinyl sign, I always, always place a thin cloth on the item and use my iron. This helps the vinyl to stick better and gives the piece more of a hand-painted look. After the first try, I still didn't like the way the vinyl was laying, so I ironed the sign again. It's funny that I'll use an iron on my signs, but I'll toss a shirt back into the dryer three or four times to get the wrinkles out. I really hate to iron. You really can't tell it on here, but the vinyl has actually melted into the creases of the sign. This is what gives it more of a hand-painted look than just sticking the vinyl on. This is what the final product looks like. I hope my customer loves it as much as I do. I may have to make another one just for myself. Leave me a comment if you have any tips or tricks when it comes to making vinyl signs. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll be publishing a lot more Christmas crafts in the weeks to come. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, just hit the bell notification. In today's video, I have this super cute and super easy rope Christmas tree tutorial. I just loved putting this together. You will need a canning lid or something round with edges, four skewers from Dollar Tree, a bead that the skewers will all fit in, and of course a hot glue gun and sticks. The first thing I did was to hot glue all four skewers into the bead at the top. Then I just pulled the skewers to the side and glued them around the lid. And it looks something like this. You will also need some rope. I got this from Dollar Tree. I started by gluing the rope to the bottom around the lid. And then I added hot glue to the skewers and started wrapping the rope around it. I had to use two packages of the rope from Dollar Tree to completely wrap the tree. You could make the tree shorter by simply clipping the skewer shorter and only use one rope. Once I got to the top, I cut the rope and pressed it into the space so it was flush with the rest of the rope. And this was the final look. I just loved it and I can't wait to incorporate it into my Christmas decor.
In today's video, I will show you how to create these book stacks that everyone has fallen in love with. And this adorable little gnome. I created both of these for less than $5 and you can too. So stay tuned. I used these three books from Dollar Tree. I was able to find books with covers so I can use them for several different projects. I took the covers outside and spray painted them with white Rust-Oleum flat enamel paint and let them dry. While the books dried, I cut out the Christmas saying on my Cricut and weeded it. If you need these for your project, check the link in the description. After the book covers had dried, I placed them back on the books. I then took some twine and wrapped it around the books about four times and tied it on the top. My camera wasn't recording when I did this and apparently the lens was a little dirty too. Sorry about that, I guess I will need to start looking at the camera before I start recording a video. I used this buffalo check wire ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby and created a simple bow and tied it in the middle with a piece of twine. And then I glued it to the top of the books. Now it's time to add our vinyl letters by simply using some transfer tape and rubbing them onto the spine of the books. And here are the books completed. They are so stinking cute. What do you think? Now that the books are complete, let's move on to the gnome. I used a bag of beans and a fluffy black sock from Dollar Tree for the base of the gnome. I pushed on the bag of beans until I got a small hole in the middle for me to hot glue the sock into the bag. I used a small round wood piece I had from a bag I got from Dollar Tree and added that to the middle for a little extra support and to give me somewhere to hot glue the yarn. I used scrap pieces of white yarn to create the gnome's beard. After cutting all the yarn, I tied everything together with a double knot and glued it to the wood in the middle of the sock. I used an old shirt for the hat. I folded under the cut edge and ironed it down on the inside. The only part I ironed was around the edge where the hat would sit on the gnome's head. I wanted the tail of the hat to stay wrinkled. I turned the hat inside out and applied hot glue to hold everything in place. After turning the hat the correct way, I glued a Dollar Tree large white pom-pom to the end of the hat. I then added the hat to the top of the gnome and hot glued the back so it would stay in place. For his nose, I used another piece of wood and hot glued it in the middle. You can leave your gnome just like this, but I felt like he needed something else, so I decided to use some of the sock I had cut off to make little legs and feet. If you hate getting burnt with hot glue, I would not recommend this part. I burnt myself too many times to count, but I think it was worth it. I think both of these turned out amazing, and I love how his little legs hang over the side of the books. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you want to be notified when I upload new videos, just click on the bell notification. Hi all my crafty friends, and welcome to Designs by Gaddis. I went to Dollar Tree today and purchased these two little Christmas trees. As you can see, they are pretty scrawny when you open them up. But just wait and see what I do with them for just $5. I just love the way they turned out. After I took the trees out of the boxes, I realized they looked like Charlie Brown Christmas trees. So I had to find a way to make them look fuller. While I was at Dollar Tree, I picked up a pack of wired garland ties. Why? I really don't know. I just thought they may come in handy, and now I'm glad I got them. I fluffed the tree out as much as I could, and then started filling in the bare spots with the garland. I took a piece of garland, wrapped it where I wanted, and then twisted it twice around itself to secure it. I used an entire bag of garland on this one tree. I did this until I was happy with the way it looked. I 
and see what a big difference a little garland fluffing can do. I then took this little box I got from Dollar Tree for another project and cut down some floral foam so it would fit in the box. I took the legs off the tree and then just simply pulled the end of the tree off and stuck it in the floral foam in the box. I started fluffing the tree out a little more until I was happy with the way it fit into the box. As you can see, I had a little helper decide she wanted to join me today. Meet Princess. She thinks my work table is her bed and she wants me to leave her alone. She also likes eating the Christmas trees. I found some brown burlap ribbon I had left over from fall, so I cut it down and placed it on top of the foam in the box to cover it up. And yes, Princess is still trying to help, or rather, trying to figure out how she can destroy my little Christmas tree. I had a small pack of LED lights from Dollar Tree, so I got them out and added batteries to make sure they worked. They did, so I went ahead and used them on the front of the tree. I hid the battery pack in the box and covered it up with the brown burlap ribbon. Here are the two trees side by side. What a difference a little garland and lights can do for a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be hand making all the ornaments for this tree. And I know you don't want to miss a minute of all the Christmas fun we are going to be having here. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, simply hit the bell notification. Merry Christmas! And as always, thanks for watching.